All righty. Welcome back, everybody, to the seventh week of our algorithm programming course. This is a Tech Bytes program where we're coming every Monday, talking about some type of problem in the programming language of Python and solving it. We whiteboard, code it out as we usually do per the week. And last week, you might remember, we talked about maximizing and making our mastermind project more efficient. This week, we're going to get back to our original type of plan, uh, going back to solving a problem, but with a unique twist today, looking at some different ways of solving them problems as well. So thanks for joining us. Looks like you guys are ready. And let's get started. You guys already know who we are, guys. My name is Ram Siddiqui. I'm a senior at Cone High School. Learn, play, code, sleep, repeat. It has been engraved in the walls. The library too now, I'm sure. And my name is Lovdi, also a senior at Cone High School. All right, you guys, so let's get down to today's agenda. That being getting to start off talking about our problem, answering any questions you guys might have about it, whiteboard it, see the different ways we're gonna solve it today and then code it. So let's get towards the problem. All right, so today's problem is return the number of times a certain substring appears in a string. So we got a lot of strings here. Um, who can tell me what a string is? It's a line of code. Hmm? Let's get more specific, Chase. Come on. Yeah. It's a line of code that's in Python. I went more. Can anyone else add to that? Okay. Uh, let's just uh, review what um, strings are. So um, Chase was right that it's a line of code. Well we got to say what type of code well um strings are a type of variable um now variables can be integers or strings or arrays um but strings are basically a list of characters that make a word a sentence anything and um strings are contained within quotation marks so um if we know strings and we know that they are a list of words then um to understand today's problem we need to know what a substring is um and a substring is basically a sub of a string. Um, now, we are going to go over what a substring is later on, but um, let's move on to uh, actually seeing, yeah, go on to the next. Yeah, let's move on to um, how, okay, we did recap string. Um, we will recap substring later on, I think. I believe, but Brian, go ahead. Yep, so like I was talking about guys, you know, a, the main idea of today is to see, say we have the word um, hello right there, right? The main idea is we wanna see how many times does a substring, meaning a string inside of a string occur. So say in this case, right, we got the variable X, right? That's gonna be our original string. So this is gonna be like the string, all right? But then we wanna see how many times the substring of hello, so how many times does this specific word occur inside of the original variable? And in this, this specific term, we can think of it as being the substring. So the part, like a sub, you could think of it right, it's that part of the original string. And today we're gonna look at two separate ways of how we can solve this problem. And the first way is the easy way out. You know, We can use Python, use the built-in functions we have and do a quick solution that way. This shouldn't take us more than five minutes. The way we use it, we have a variable. We put a counter, which is gonna represent how many times the substring appears in the original string and just do that variable, that count and whatever we're looking for. And then we'll be uh, told how many times that specific substring occurs. Now, before we get towards moving on the other methodology, how we can do this. Hey, Avanish, let's do a quick little uh, speed run. Avanish coming in the nick of time for these speed runs uh, of how many times does a certain substring occur in a uh, regular string. So say we'll do the original string is equal to, uh, we can do banana, all right? So I'm looking for how many times does this substring occur? we can do the substring of, no, NA. So how many, who can tell me? If I were to use a dot count function, how many times does the substring na appear in the original string, banana? Two, Twice. two, to the first. Exactly, and the reason, uh, Avanish, tell us why. 
Because cause since you said like the substring is NA and then if you just put like to the word banana, you can just um, see there's two of the NAs. Exactly, right there. So if you guys can see right a there. A pair. What's up? Like it's a pair of NAs. Yeah, it's a pair, it's a pair of NAs, no pun intended. Yep. We'll do a couple more. So say the next string is uh, apple. Sure, apple, right? And then say we're looking for the substring of plural. How many times? One. Exactly. And the way we're going to be able to do this today is quickly using a function called dot count, which is going to make our lives a bunch uh, times easier. But we are advancing. So how about we talk about some other ways we can do this as well? All right. So. Um... Yeah, today, uh, instead of um, actually just using the dot count function, we'll actually be creating our own dot count function. Now, um, before uh, we do create that with Rayon, um, we're going to um, just like use the dot count function that Python provides so we know what it's going to do, basically what we did with that speed round. And all right, so I just have a replit open that I'm going to share with you guys. I will be the first one in it. Let's see. Yes, you watch. All right. Okay, so um, let's have the same string that we had in that can speed like, round. Oh. I was gonna say, like, can you post a replit link, but it was already there. Yep, okay, so let's have a string called, let's call that string a string is equal to, and then inside our quotation marks, a banana. And then um, let's say, x is equal to that string, so that variable dot count. And then inside count, we're going to have what we're what we are counting. So what do we what did we count before the na, right? So inside that we're just going to put in na. And basically what this um, function is going to do is from the string variable, which is a string uh, named banana, it's going to dot count, again, this is a function. A function is basically something that does a task, a method. Um, but inside that function, we're passing a parameter, ting ting keyword, um, and that parameter just tells the function that try to find these substrings um, inside this string. Now, don't worry, Avanish, we're going to print that x in a minute, or in a second, I should say. So just going to print that x, so the variable we just created. And let's take a look. Um, so what, what should be printed out? Foo. Mm -hmm. And there we go. So let's try that uh, second example that we did. So apple, and then we, we looked for, I think, ple. Yeah. All right, so that uh, comes out as 1. So it's a pretty basic function if you use it. But today, we're actually going to um, define this function, actually do the, um, the tasks that this function does for us automatically so we know what is happening behind the scenes. And here we go. Exactly, yeah. So we've, um, you know, we've talked about in the past, like when we were doing our exponent activity, we were raising numbers to certain powers. Uh, we could use a Python function, but this time, we're actually going to code our own dot count function, see how that works. But in order to do that, we first got to understand the idea we've reviewed in the past of substring. Now remember, substring, basic idea still, we're extracting a specific part from the original string. So say our original string is free code camp. By using this type of syntax, so we say string, the brackets, zero till five, we're printing out the first five letters, which occur from the zero width, which is the F, letter F, till the fifth index, so zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now you might say if the fifth index is the letter O, why isn't the letter O being printed out? Well, remember, it's always exclusive of the last number. So if we wanted to include the letter O, what would we change the five to? Anybody have an idea? Six. Six. Exactly. So, so, if, you, so if you put it as five, it'll just print free C. And then if you put it as six, it'll be free call. 
exactly. Yep, Avanish, exactly. That's the main thing. And we can are going to use this idea of substring today when looking at if a certain string occurs in the large, if a certain substring occurs in the larger string. So looks like we have this concept knocked down. But if you guys ever have any questions as we're going through, it's going too fast, guys. Feel free to unmute or message us privately, and we'll be sure to take another moment. Drake, you got a question? Uh, the link is not inside uh, Tech Docs Google Classroom. For the Zoom? Yeah. Uh, I believe it should be. If just if you want to go to Google Classroom and then go to the Classwork tab. Yeah, I didn't uh, see it. Uh, yeah. You, guys, you know, you usually have a Classwork tab, and then you go to the Algorithm Programming. There's a Zoom link right there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say it. The last one that you post was week six. Oh, okay, okay. oh, you're talking about the announcements. Yeah, yeah, I did not post an announcement. We'll, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, we'll be sure to post an announcement every day. I guess that is easier. Okay. But yeah, if we ever do not post an announcement like today, just head on over to the Classwork tab and we have the Zoom link in each of the folders. Okay. Yep. Alrighty, so with that idea down, how about we do a, a quick little whiteboard, get this idea folded out and visioned out, and then we can start actually coding it. Um, I have a question about the Google, class, Google Classroom. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, I've been trying to get in, but it's not letting me. It's saying, um, like, uh, something like this account doesn't work. Uh, okay, here, let me send you a direct link. You and yeah, I, got, I just sent one. Okay, yeah. yeah. Try keep clicking on that and going through that. Maybe that should work. Um, this account does not have access to this class. Please switch accounts or contact your teacher. Uh, have you tried entering the code? I think there's like an invite link. You guys can send, maybe. Yeah, that's what I sent. And yeah. also, are you on a school account? Because if you're on a school yeah. account, it won't work. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah, if you, actually, if you're using a before account, I'd recommend making a new account and uh, logging it through that. If you have a personal account besides school. Um. No. Okay. Uh, do you know how to make a Google account? No. Um, all righty. So stick around a couple minutes after class, and then Lobby and I, we can help you make an account real quick, and you can join. Yep. Okay. So just wait a couple minutes after, and we should be good. All right. So in the meantime, guys, how about we get back to the idea of uh, getting this code laid out for us creating our own dot count function. And the way we're going to think of it is we're going to have the function right and we're going to have to sort of go over all of the letters inside of our string. So when I say iterating, going over all the letters, what comes in your head? Is there a specific um, term we're going to use to multiple times do something? Loop. Exactly. And what type of loop, Avanish, are we going to use? For loop. Exactly, and bonus question, can you tell me why? Because if you use a for loop, because then you, you, you'll put like some value after like the four, and then it'll do like for that, it'll, it'll do like how many times for the loop, and then if you're doing like the string case here, it'll, it'll be regarding like the letters, how many times? Exactly, the main thing is, um, we know beforehand how many times this loop is gonna run. It's gonna run the amount of times our length is of our string minus one to make sure we don't go out of range. And whenever we know beforehand how many times our loop is gonna run, how many times our loop is gonna run, we always use a for loop. So since there's no other condition being checked for, no need to worry about a while loop. And then once we are looping over our letters, we're gonna use the idea of substringing in order to check those specific cases. So say we're looking for like the word na again, right? We're gonna check and see if the substring of nav appears in our original string. And then once we have that, we're gonna to have to use a separate counter variable, which will keep, um, keep track of the number of times the substring appears. 
So the idea is pretty simple. And now with that down, does anybody have any questions of our plan is? And if not, we can get started coding. Alrighty. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so are you gonna be doing like two codes? One is you're gonna do the code for the counter and the other one is for the loop. Yep. So here is the link to the second replit if you guys want to hop on that. Dang, I wasn't the first one to this one. Almost made it to this one. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to be finding a substring and a string by doing it manually. And the first thing first is we're going to make our function. So we'll say def, and then we'll say, um, um, if I use count, would that? I think we should be fine. Yeah, so we'll say count, or we'll just say count, um, count times just to be safe. And then we're going to create two parameters. Now, who can give us the class a quick reminder of what are parameters? It's like a variable or something that's inside the parentheses. Exactly, and that variable we can use inside of our functions. So that variable, uh, we're gonna have two parameters. The first parameter is gonna be our original string. And then the second parameter is gonna be the sub, um, sub string, uh, that's the word. So we can say um, mini string, we'll call it mini string. And the mini string is what we're gonna be looking for. Add our colon, make sure indications are all good. Alrighty, so what we can do is to make this uh, look a bit nice, we can print out firstly and say the original string is like this and then say the original string and then we can copy and paste the exact same thing for the second string. So say sub string we're looking for is the mini string. So just to make sure this is working guys, I'm gonna call this function so we can do count times now, inside of these two parentheses, remember, I got to include the two parameters. So the first one is going to be the original string. So say we go back to that banana example, B-A-N-A-N-A, -A -A, and then we're looking for N-A. Now, if I hit run, we should see the original string is banana, and the substring is na. Give it a moment. There's a lot of appreciation, uh, appreciation for banana today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah, so there we go. Uh, we are being correctly told out what our two parameters, which we are passing in. Now comes the part where we're going to use a for loop to keep track of our letters and iterate over them. Right. So firstly, before we get into that for loop as well, what I'm going to do is create a counter variable and just set it equal to zero because this counter variable is going to keep track of how many times does na appear in banana like that. And now we can start coding our for loop. So it's going to be four. We can do the variable x in a range of. Now, how many times do we want this for loop to run? Anybody have an idea? Twice. Well, maybe five. Yep, so it all depends on however long our original string is. Because say if I have a really long word, if I have a small word, it all depends. So on... six? Yep, so in this case, actually, it would be six. And if we want to make our function apply to any string in the world, what we can do is say whatever the length of our original string is. Does that make sense, Why? Yes, it does. All right. And one caveat, which we got to remember, is we're going to do minus one. So whatever the length of our string is, minus one, because we want to make sure that we're not getting any types of errors when looking uh, through our code. Like there's, can, there can be a range error if we're looking at indexes which don't exist. So make sure to make sure we don't uh, encounter that error, we're going to do minus one. All right. So with our for loop and the condition satisfied all right now, we now have to do the actual brains. Now, who has an idea? Anybody have an idea? We're gonna have to start looking and doing some cases and seeing if the our substring, the mini string now, appears in banana. So does anybody have an idea what term are we gonna use to check if a certain condition is true? Wait, what? 
uh, anybody have an idea? Because now we got to check if the sub the substring appears in the original string, but we have to use the term we've talked about in the past. It starts with a C. Count. It goes something like if. Remember, these are called con conditions. Conditionals, exactly. Yep. So now we're going to check and use a conditional to see if this mini string ever appears in the larger string. And the way we're going to do that is using the idea of substring. So what I'm going to do is say if our original string use those two brackets to show the substring. From whatever position we're currently at to the next couple of positions. Now, in this case, I could say, look at the first position towards the next position to see if this two letter word occurs. So I could do X plus two to show I'm going two positions ahead. But the thing is, this program wouldn't run for every other type of string. So anybody have an idea of how we can get the length? Are we gonna, have any, have anybody have an idea? Um, you could put like, let's see, what was it again? It's like length. You have to do like, it has length in it. I, I can't, it's on the tip of my. Exactly, up right there. So we're going to be looking at the current position. So say we're at the zero position, looking at however many positions, number of times long our word is. So say the word na is two letters long. So we're going to look at the first position towards the third, but remember the third is exclusive. So we're gonna be looking at the first two, which makes sure everything is perfect for us. Yeah, I thought the last letter was exclusive. Yep, it is. No, I just used like the third letter is exclusive. Oh, I'm just talking about this case. If we were to do zero to three, the third would be exclusive. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, good question. So since we have our original string, all we have to do is now compare this to see if it equals our mini string, AKA our substring. And if it does, that's when we know this little string is somewhere in this larger string. And whenever that happens, we gotta increase our counter. So we can say the counter equals counter plus one, adding one more to that counter variable. All righty. So with that out of the way, there's only one thing left for us to do and that being print out the counter variable. So what we can do is go out of our for loop, go out of our conditionals to make sure we don't print it too many times and just say print. And we can say the substring occurs and then we can print it out. So counter number of times. Alrighty, so we've done this example three times now, the banana one, we should see NA, it goes once and then twice. So now here we go, if we hit run, here we go. We see that the substring occurs two number, two, uh, two times, that's a bit of grammar off. So the substring occurs two times and that's exactly how we planned it. And we can do this with any type of string now. So say we do um, watermelon, I'm going a bunch of fruits today looks like and say how many times does water occur? How many times would it be, guys? One. One. And if I hit run, we see twice. <laughs> watermelon only appears one time. And this can be applied to any um, type of word we're looking for. And since the way we made our program, it's not dependent on the letters. So since we're using the length function, we are all good and can do any types of words we would like. Anybody have any questions about what we went over? Nope. So I actually have a question, genuine question. Um, so you said, um, it, it, this is a question for like everyone like to think about it, I guess. Um, but so if you take the substring of the original string going from like uh, from zero to the length. So suppose I'm at um, the L and then I'm trying to see from L to O-N. So in the watermelon L-O-N. And then I'm trying to find water. Um, does taking the string, the substring of L O N, um, that is, that has a greater length, does that give us an error, or Python just uh, takes that into account and doesn't give that error to us? 
That's a good question. I think what's happening is because of the minus one. So if I take that out, let's see. Oh, what if it's occurring at the end? So say we look for LON. Oh, wow. Okay. So that is interesting. That shouldn't be occurring. Originally, I thought we must do minus one. But it seems like, say we go back to the banana example as well. What happens if you put something that isn't a part of the word? Will it error out or will it just say zero? Let's try that. I think it'll, I think it'll error out. It does not. It oh, error yeah. <laughs> we have made an error proof function. That's the way to go. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Looks like we do not even need the minus one. That's just good practice, I guess, for now. But um, other than that, the main idea is still the same. We use a for loop going over each letter and then doing a substring and checking where that specific instance of our substring occurs and then just incrementing our counter by one to show the substring has been found. All righty, guys. So that takes us towards the end of today's uni class where we looked at two ways. And that's the main thing with this algorithmic programming course. We want to see how that there's there's probably even more ways to do this whole solution. You know, we showed today two ways, the Python function and the way we were doing it manually. There's probably tens of other ways. You could do this much more efficiently probably too. But the main thing is you got to realize that the way we do stuff each week, there's always going to be other ways to do it. And that's what makes coding pretty cool. I could do something one way, Lobby could do another. But at the end of the day, do our products work? Yes, they do, right? So hopefully you guys had a bit of fun with that today. And guys, remember, we got our product development coming up this Wednesday. Going to keep on working on that Tikinter tic-tac-toe. Having a bunch of fun with that. Other than that, guys, have a good upcoming week. I'll see you guys on the next one. See you guys.